Fortnite Chapter 1 Season 2 was pretty good. There was a lot of great things that were added this season, lots of fun items, the battle pass, and many new POIs. But, if you haven't watched my other videos on the previous Fortnite seasons, I would highly recommend doing so. I'll even put it at the top right by the I thing. It's probably still a YouTube feature, I, I, I hope. Alright, let's get started. On December 14th, 2017, Chapter 1 Season 2 released, with the version 1.11 update. This introduced a replacement for the Season Shop, the Fortnite Battle Pass. To get access to the Battle Pass, it cost 950 V-Bucks and gave 70 tiers of rewards, which you would need Battle Stars to unlock. Battle Stars were separate from the level system and would be earned by doing daily challenges. The Battle Pass gave XP rewards and cosmetics including two new types, emotes and emoticons. In the Battle Pass, there were 16 banners, 16 emoticons, 4 emotes, 3 gliders, 3 harvesting tools, and 4 outfits. But were the skins cool? The first skin in the Battle Pass was Blue Squire. Just a basic knight, but still pretty cool skin. 6 out of 10. Next was Royale Knight. Just a reskin of Blue Squire, 6 out of 10. Sparkle Specialist is kind of just a shiny default skin, but also kind of feels really out of place since the whole battle pass is just medieval themed, 4 out of 10. Last skin of the battle pass was Black Knight. He was the first legendary skin in the game and he deserves it. A tier 100 skin should be something intimidating and make everyone tremble around you, not Rick Sanchez. 8 out of 10. One of the best features of the battle pass was that you had the ability to earn back 1200 V-Bucks. You could then save these toward the next season and you wouldn't have to spend another $10 which makes the battle pass very consumer friendly. The downside of the battle pass was that it only lasted for the duration of the season, and if it wasn't finished, the rewards would not be able to be earned later. But enough of the battle pass, it's time to check out the rest of the update. Christmas time was also approaching and Fortnite was getting fest. There was a cool new lobby background, the battle bus is now santified, supply drops are wrapped, and Christmas trees can be found around the island that had three chest spawns. Another new feature added this season was seasonal wind umbrellas. If you won a game during season 2, you would unlock the snowflake umbrella. Every season from then on gives these out. But now, time to get into the gameplay stuff. Items that return include the assault rifle, the assault rifle burst, the assault rifle scope, the pump shotgun, the tactical shotgun, the submachine gun, the tactical submachine gun, the submachine gun suppressor, the pistol, the revolver, the bolt action sniper rifle, the semi-automatic sniper rifle, the rocket launcher, grenades, bushes, smoke grenades, bandages, medkits, shield potions, slurp juice, the damage traps, ceiling zappers, wall dynamos, directional jump pads, and launch pads. The grenade launcher technically returned but it was kind of reskinned as a snowball launcher for the holidays. Like the rocket launcher and the pumpkin launcher, these two weapons were exactly the same except the snowball launcher screams. Three weapons also got renamed. The assault rifle burst became the burst assault rifle. The assault rifle scope became the assault rifle with scope. And the submachine gun suppressor became the suppressed submachine gun. Man, they just hate parentheses, don't they? The grenade now has a trajectory arc and a new icon that actually looks like the grenade in game instead of just a white outline. This update didn't bring many issues or glitches, but one unintended strategy that started to gain traction during this time was known as Double Pump. Players discovered that the pump did not have a weapon swap delay, meaning that if you carry two pumps, you can shoot quickly and swap to the other one. With this exploit, you could bypass the pump's slow fire rate and rapid fire it to deal massive amounts of damage. This wouldn't be fixed until the next season, so this feature remained throughout the entirety of the season, and was loved and hated by many. On December 19th, 2017, the Small Shield Potion was released. It came in an uncommon rarity and took 2 seconds to use. He healed 25 shield but could not heal past 50 shield. This made healing a lot less mindless and more strategic. Small Shield Potions were easier to find and faster to use but could not heal full shield, while the regular Shield Potion is slower and harder to find. It created a cool synergy between these two items that gave the healing system more flair. This update also removed a lot of filler traps in the loop pool. 
If you remember, the Ceiling Zapper, Damage Trap, and the Wall Dynamo do the exact same thing, except that they are placed on different surfaces. This update vaulted the Ceiling Zapper and the Wall Dynamo, leaving the only offensive trap being the Damage Trap. To compensate for this, the Damage Trap was changed from rare to uncommon and is now able to be placed on walls and ceilings as well. The Directional Jump Pad was also vaulted because it was just a worse version of the Launch Pad. This tidying up of the loophole simplified traps and made them much more convenient and easier to use. On December 23rd, 2017, the Boogie Bomb was released. It came in an uncommon rarity and was really good. The Boogie Bomb is thrown like a grenade and explodes on impact. Instead of doing damage, anyone in the blast radius dances for 10 whole seconds. This item was great for trolling and even great for actually getting the upper hand on your opponent. Disabling an opponent for 10 seconds is extremely overpowered and made this item very useful. Also 50v50 returned until December 28th, 2017. On December 27th, 2017, the boogie bomb dance time was reduced from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. A much needed nerf but still remained a very good item. On December 28th, 2017, the High Explosives L team was released replacing 50v50. This game mode only had explosive items for an explosive experience. High Explosives would then leave on January 2nd, 2018. On January 1st, 2018, the Suppressed Pistol was released. It came in an epic and legendary rarity and used light ammo. It was meant to be an upgraded version of the pistol similar to how the SCAR is an upgraded version for the assault rifle. Because of this, it shared very similar stats to the pistol. But unlike the SCAR, the suppressed pistol was a separate weapon than the pistol. The main notable difference being the suppressor that made the weapon much quieter. The suppressed pistol was a pretty fun and viable weapon to use as well. On January 5th, 2018, the Sneaky Silencers LTM was released, replacing the High Explosives LTM. The only weapons in this mode were the Suppressed Submachine Gun and the Suppressed Pistol. Also, the Bush's spawn rate would be increased. This stealthy game mode would only stay until January 8th, 2018. On January 10th, 2018, version 2.1.0 released. Technically the first update of the season. It introduced the Cozy Campfire that came in a rare rarity. It was a healing trap that could only be placed on floors. It healed 2 health every second to whoever was nearby and lasted for 25 seconds. So basically, it could heal a max of 50 health after 25 seconds. It was an okay healing item, but placing multiple down was very effective, especially in Storm. Overall, a pretty decent and unique trap. This update also nerfed the Boogie Bomb even more. Firstly, its rarity was increased from uncommon to rare, making it harder to obtain. Secondly, a feature was added that when someone takes damage while they are dancing, it cancels the effect. This made it a little more fair to opponents that are hit by a boogie bomb and makes it easier to recover from it. On January 18th, 2018, version 2.2.0 released, and with it brought the first major map changes to the game. If you look at the map, you will notice that most of the points of interest are on the east side. This update epic addressed the issue of the west side of the map being pretty barren and made it much more viable to land at. First of all, four brand new POIs were added to the map. Haunted Hills was added west of Pleasant Park. It was a pretty cool spooky location. It had a large church and graveyard. The bad thing was that it was pretty hidden away and behind two massive mountains, but a pretty unique location nonetheless. Also, it was a community made concept which is pretty sick. Junk Junction was also added north of Haunted Hills, on the very northwest of the map. It was a fenced-in junkyard that had two buildings. The rest of the area was a bunch of crushed cars and other debris. Another unique area for pretty fun gameplay because of the corridors of crushed cars. Shifty Shafts was also added just east of Greasy Grove. This was an underground mine PY. While it may not have been the best for loot, the maze of shafts underneath the dirt made it pretty fun to sneak up and take out opponents. Behind the large mountain northeast of Greasy Grove, Snobby Shores was added. It was a bougie neighborhood area, but unlike the other suburban areas, Snobby Shores had all of its houses lined up, making it more contained. Also, the southmost house had a secret underground bunker. This POI had decent loot, but was pretty unpopular due to how far away it was from the center of the island. Lastly, Tilted Towers was added southwest of Loot Lake. This was a massive city POI. 
the most ambitious area that had been added yet. There was a lot of multi-story buildings and a clock tower. It had the most loot of any location and became the most popular area on the map. So popular in fact that a majority of the lobby landed there each match. This was a very good PY, but in my opinion just a little overrated. This update also brought a few unnamed areas. There was a large industrial area northeast of Flush Factory. An abandoned motel was added west of Anarchy Acres. An indoor soccer stadium was added north of Greasy Grove. A destroyed neighborhood area was added north of Pleasant Park. And an outskirt area was added south of Shifty Shafts. This update additionally introduced biomes on the map. The west side of the island is now a mountainous biome with darker grass. The area by Anarchy Acres is now a farm biome with yellow grass. The Moisty Mire area now has a swamp biome, and everywhere else has a basic grass biome. This helped differentiate the map and make each area stand out with different environments. The winter event concluded, and the lobby screen, battle pass, and supply drops are now back to normal. The snowball launcher has also been reverted back to the grenade launcher. Another great thing that happened this update was the removal of friendly fire. Oh, that was magic! On January 25th, 2018, version 2.3.0 released with a new Chug Jug item. It came in a legendary rarity and took 15 seconds to use. Well, it took a while to drink, he healed all health and shield to max. Just a pretty decent item, not much else to say. On January 29th, 2018, the Sniper Shootout L team released. In it, the only weapons were snipers and the revolver for some reason. I don't know dude, looks like a sniper to me. This LTM was only available until February 5th, 2018. On February 2nd, 2018, version 2.4.0 release bringing in the new minigun. It used light ammo and came in an epic and legendary rarity. This weapon was exceedingly powerful. The minigun was kind of like the submachine gun but had an infinite magazine. It had about a 2.5 charge time and no cooldown. That means you can shoot for as long as you have bullets, which was pretty broken. The minigun was good for fighting people directly but worked best to destroy structures. Also, something pretty unique about the minigun is that unlike every other gun in the game, it has a unique deploy animation. Every other gun you just kind of just grab off of your back but this, it comes out of a briefcase. As you can see in the concept art for the minigun, it's actually just a tiny briefcase that you just deploy outright. And to this day is the only weapon that has a unique deploy animation. On February 5th, 2018, the Shooting Test 1 LTM released replacing Sniper Shootout. In this LTM, first shot accuracy was added. Damage drop-off was implemented to all weapons except shotguns, snipers, and explosives. The assault rifle with scope, the burst assault rifle, and all the SMGs got a damage buff. Shotgun's headshot multiplier was reduced to 1.5, and every other weapon's headshot multiplier was changed to 2. This L team was pretty much just to test out different balances and features that would later be introduced to the game. But this L team would only last for a few days. On February 8th, 2018, version 2.4.2 .2 released, and with it, the Cupid's Crossbow arrived. Unlike every other seasonal item, the Cupid's Crossbow was an original weapon. It used arrows with an infinite ammo and came in a rarity of rare and epic. It was a scoped crossbow that was very silent. It had okay damage, but the problem was that it was meant to be a long-range weapon, but had damage drop-off. To top it off, the arrows it shot were actually projectiles, and they moved kinda slow. Anything that has a scope should not have damage drop-off. That's just kinda counterintuitive. The Cupid's Crossbow is still a pretty decent weapon, but by far not the best. On February 15th, 2018, version 2.5.0 released, the last update of the season. With it, impulse grenades were released and they came in a rare rarity. When thrown, they would explode after a bit and knock players away. These were pretty good for mobility, but they did not stop fall damage, so you can kill your opponents with it as well. A very versatile and fun item. This update the submachine gun got vaulted. 
They decided to take it out of the game because they had buffed it so many times and it still remained a very terrible weapon. Next, the assault rifle with scope's headshot multiplier was changed from 2.5 to 2. The revolver now takes medium ammo instead of light ammo, and the tactical submachine gun got a fire rate buff and magazine size increase. There were also shrines added around the map for Chinese New Year, each containing three chests, similar to the Christmas trees. The last day of the season was February 21st, 2018. The entirety of the season lasted for 69 days. Nice. So that was Season 2. Definitely a massive improvement from Season 1. It introduced the Battle Pass, had a bunch of fun and useful items, big map changes, and fixed issues from previous seasons. But I'd like to know your guys' opinions about the season, so uh, comment them below. I'm going to leave now. Okay, bye.